Hey everybody, thanks for coming to another episode of Adventures in Angular. I'm the host, Aaron Frost. I work with Hero Devs and NGConf and a couple of my friends. Today on our panel, we have one of everybody's favorites, Brian Love. How's it going? Where are you at today? I am in Austria in a small town in the Alps called St. Johann in Pangau. I might oh. be butchering that. I'm sorry if I did I'm, to anybody sure who's Austrian or German. Yeah. <laughs> They're having a nice perfect, time here bro. in the Alps. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it sounded like you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For those following Brian's adventure, he's now down in mainland Europe, and yep. uh, he's on his way down. Yep. Sounds like, where are you going to end? Spain. So from here, uh, we go back to Munich to grab a flight to Barcelona, and oh. then we're going to spend about two weeks in Spain. But we haven't decided where yet. So, and then uh, back to the U.S. Back to the U.S.A., man. Yep. It'd be nice to get back and have some, like, Taco Bell. You're <laughs> missing kidding. it, huh? You're missing <laughs> no. it. There's a, fr- a friend of ours from Munich. I remember I asked him. I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, but I asked him. He had his uh, spouse was from Florida, and, you know, he went to the States several times to visit family and stuff. And I said, I said, so what's your, what's your favorite thing about the United States? I kid you not. Taco Bell. Shut up. <laughs> that's his favorite thing. That's all we got. That's the best that's thing we got to offer. That's, this that's what, right. Yep. Well, whatever. Well, whatever. I, at this point in time, it's difficult to disagree. <laughs> right? It's difficult. I thought it was it, it was good. I'll yeah. never forget that. As our guest today, we have Zama. Zama. Hi, guys. This episode is sponsored by Sentry.io. Recently, I came across a great tool for tracking and monitoring problems in my apps. Then I asked them if they wanted to sponsor the show and allow me to share my experience with you. Sentry provides a terrific interface for keeping track of what's going on with my app. It also tracks releases so I can tell if what I deployed makes things better or worse. They give you full stack traces and as much information as possible about the situation when the error occurred to help you track down the errors. Plus, one thing I love, you can customize the context provided by Sentry. So, if you're looking for specific information about the request, you can provide it. It automatically scrubs passwords and secure information, and you can customize the scrubbing as well. Finally, it has a user feedback system built in that you can use to get information from your users. Oh, and I also love that they support open source to the point where they actually open source Sentry if you want to self-host it. Use the code devchat at sentry.io to get two months free on Sentry's small plan. That's code devchat at sentry.io. Zama, you, you're from Dallas? You're, you're yes. living in Dallas right now? Yeah, yeah I'm living in Dallas, uh, originally from India, from so Hyderabad. Is your, your full name is Mohammed Zama Khan? Yeah, you or can no? say Mohammed Zama Khan or Zama Khan Muhammad. Mohammed. Yeah. Zama Khan Muhammad. Cool. For those wondering, Mohammed Zama Khan, Khan spelled like Kublai Khan, the conqueror. <laughs> Mohammed Zama Khan, that's his Twitter handle if you guys want to go out and read more about him on Twitter. We wanted to bring you on because we saw that you just wrote a book and we know you're an open source contributor. You know, we're like, hey, let's let's get Zama on and have some conversations about what he's working on just to kind of get him to know, um, get the community to know him a little better. So yesterday, actually, in a really timely tweet, Minko actually tweeted out about your book. Right, he, right. He said it was, uh, it was a great way to see Angular through different contexts. So tell us a little bit about this book. It sound I've heard this isn't the first time I've heard someone say it was good. Tell tell us kind of what what are you talking about in this book? So what I do here in this book, it takes a different approach for programming, especially Angular. It takes you from the different projects perspective rather than you know concept perspective. It takes you in the first chapter. It introduces some uh, basic uh, you know setup for how you can set up Angular how you can install Angular CLI, Angular Console, which is really good for beginners to begin with. And then in the first chapter, I go with basic you know, project for the building of Flash-based application where you create flashes and very small project for beginners to get in. And I also try to cover like Angular Console in that so that beginners don't have to go into Angular CLI and uh, learn a lot. And then I go into something like Angular Router by using creating an brand new project from scratch. And then I go into progressive web app, so server, server cyber rendering application, ironing application, native set, native square application, and show the users about how they can actually use the whole platform and build cool s- stuff, not just by learning through projects, but also by maybe taking these concepts and applying them in their own projects. Yeah, that's really cool. I think it's interesting that you mentioned PWAs. So that's something... 
obviously not everybody in the Angular community is leveraging, perhaps. What Was there a reason why you chose to kind of include that in the book? Or did it just felt like something natural to you? So, so, so my basic idea was since before I wrote this book or, or take, took this book, I worked on a lot of different projects in my company and I was able to achieve, mm-hmm. like I created an Ionic application with CouchDB and stuff and was able to like build it in like in a month. I know the power of Angular, even though like most of my career I have worked in the recent past, I've been working on React, but also developed applications with Angular and was able to build rapidly and to show that power of how you can create an application like a progressive web app in matter of few commands using Angular CLI's beauty uh, schematics, that was really my understanding was to teach people how easy it, it is to achieve all these different mm-hmm. capabilities and add, add those things and go from there, like try to learn and also create some good applications for your app, uh, you know, for your companies and for your own, if you're creating your own project, then yeah, just utilize it. So that's really cool. It is cool. So with every chapter, it sounds, or with every concept, it sounds like you kind of have the reader engine new up a new project and then you kind of dive in. I like that approach. Why did you choose to do that approach? Like, why did you say, Hey, yeah, Let's that's not definitely just build different. on the same project. Let's build. Yeah, yeah. The main thing was I wanted to cover not just the different, uh, you know, capabilities, but I also wanted to use a new component library or something new. Like, you know, in a chapter I bring in a chapter where where I use native script, I use ngx translate. So maybe like the same ngx translate can be used in some other chapters, and some new cool like uh, component libraries like Mo- uh, Momentum UI, Material Design. Bootstrap, Bulma, et cetera. So, so I just wanted to put more and more tools for people to like look at different stuff and know about the community, how deep and rich the community is and utilize those tools. That's really great. I like that you're bringing in all those different things from the ecosystem yeah. right, around Angular, uh, yeah. native script, Ionic. You mentioned the Angular console, especially for if you're not comfortable in the terminal. I mean, these are all things that are not, you know, shipped by Google, right? But it's yeah. part of the larger Angular ecosystem that really makes Angular fantastic and a good solution for a lot of projects and companies. And it is all Angular, right? Like it, it, you're all you're writing Angular and all of it. But yeah. like with Native Script, you're going to bring in some. I think they're called Telerik, Telerik, Native Telerik or, pro, or Progress. Yeah, yeah, Telerik. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, and so you, you got to bring in some Telerik modules, and then. If you're doing Ionic, you got to get used to the Ionic build stuff, right? So it's probably pretty good to to take those separate just because they're pretty distinct, right? Yeah, yeah. They are distinct, but they also have some similarities. Yeah. What makes them so great is is the framework thing that comes with it. Like, I, I don't think Native Script would have been such a great tool if Angular wouldn't have been a part of it. I mean, I know that there is a Manila JavaScript thing that you can do with Native Script or use Vue. But then what gave them a lot of push was having them integrated into the framework and making it easier for development. Similar to React Native, like React Native, I don't think it would have been popular without React. Sure. I think Native Script, you can do like vanilla JS and I think XML maybe for like the view layer, but it's pretty challenging. Angular puts a nice wrapper almost, if you will, on top of that and, uh, you know, allows you to, you know, go faster and, and to make things uh, easier. So, right. yeah, that's cool. I was just wondering, did we mention the name of the book, the title of the book and the publisher and how re- you know readers, if they're listening at this point going, oh, this is a really cool book. I, I want to get my hands on this. What's the title and the publisher and how do we go about getting it? It's called Angular Project. It's published by Pact Publishers and you can find it at angularprojects.com. Awesome. Thanks. Angularprojects.com. So I'm certainly wondering this. I'm guessing maybe some other readers are wondering how insane do you have to be to write a book? And then two, how long does it take to write a book? Like <laughs> I tried to do one one time and it took me a long time and I never shipped. So I'm just wondering how long did it take you to do this? Oh yeah. So that's a story behind it. Like when I got an offer from Pact about writing a book, my wife was expecting, like she was in her beginning she was like in third or fourth month 
that we were expecting a baby. And it was really a challenge for me to like, take this project up. And I knew that I could write this book because working on so many multiple Angular projects makes me eligible to write this book. And I would, I could have done uh, a lot of justice to the title of the book. So contributing the community was one of my passion. And I know th- that writing a book is, is a big task that you will take up. And I took up and then once my wife delivered, I took a four months break, like three or four months break and then finished my book. But then, yeah, so it's a big task that you have to take up and think about writing a book is (laughs) I actually, after writing this book, I got a couple of offers for writing another book. I was like, okay, not, I don't want to write it. (laughs) Not (laughs) yet. Not not yet. I have different plans. Maybe wait till the kids too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Wait till the kid grows up a bit. I could just see Zama, like, baby in hand, MacBook Pro on the knee, just kind of one, one, typing it out. (laughs) So when I think about writing a book, I feel like it's kind of like selling a multi-level marketing. Like, you have to get all your friends on board to, like, like proofread your book and give you feedback on your chapters and your examples and stuff. Was that pretty hard or did Pact help make that easy? They made it a very, it made it a lot better. I mean, they have editors and they have proofreaders, et cetera, doing it right down. Like when I started writing my book, I was using Angular 7. And then when, when the book was published, it was Angular 8. And I was also taking up NX. So NX changed a lot. So I had to like change a lot of stuff by the end. And they really helped me. For, for, for I mean, for the first time writer, I would suggest to take a publisher. Maybe in future, if you're, maybe thinking of writing a book, maybe self-publishing might be an option, but for the first time publisher or uh, author, I would suggest to go with a publisher and go with that. Because of the structure. And the yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds you, hard to me. So I'm glad that you did that and got that assistance from them. Yeah. You mentioned NX. Is NX also included in the book in one of the projects or one of the chapters? Actually it's included in a couple of chapters. I had one chapter where I developed an e-commerce application using PWA. And then I took that and converted that into a monorepo application and created an admin application over on, on top of it. Got and it. Then Very in cool. another chapter where I'm, I'm trying to teach how to build Angular components and how to publish them on NPM and stuff, I used NX yep. because that makes sense to have a monorepo where you have a demo application as well as your library application and you can have a very good interaction with both of them. Well, that's interesting. I've never thought of using NX for that particular solution. I've always just used the CLI because it has libs and then it does all the ng packager stuff for you. That's cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, that's cool. Doing uh, this book wasn't your first kind of adventure into the community. It sounds like you've done some open source stuff too. It sounds like me and you are probably going to have to get in a, in a fight by the time the podcast is over. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have kind of a competing open source project. Not competing. I mean, we probably... I wrote mine. I didn't know if there was any other out there. So We yeah, should I see how many might. GitHub stars I have. Yeah. I well, his has way more GitHub stars than mine. <laughs> he has a good name. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's a good project. Too. I didn't mean to say anything about it. So NGX loadable and what else? I saw something else on the CV. So I started with Formly. Oh yeah. Guys, so I used to work at Cisco, and we used to when I'm we used to do Angular.js. We used to use Formly, mm-hmm. and then we were try, uh, going to Angular. And I wanted to for my own project have a similar kind of a project for Angular two. I started when Angular two was in release candidate and. From release candidate one and two, there was a real a big change, and right, like we we introduced ng modules and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I started my Angular two adventures from there, building Angular uh, formally, and mm-hmm. worked on it. And then I went into a React project, and then I slowly reduced my contributions to NGX formally. But now looking at the community, it has twenty thousand downloads per week, which is great. And then I I was a bit busy in React community you know, give you context. My company is a digital transformation company working for multiple different clients. Sometimes I work for two clients and stuff. So some of them projects are in Angular, React, and Mix. So even though I, I, I'm currently developing using React, 
I know my peers and I have to do code reviews for people that are working on Angular. And I always saw this thing with Codelizer, you know, accessibility stuff, which brings up to me, like a lot of people that, that are working here are junior and they don't focus on accessibility. And when I used to work on React projects, I knew that there are accessibility tools within like a linters, a ESLint world. And we didn't have that in Angular. So I tweeted about it on uh, Twitter and said, okay, do we have something like this or do we have to create a new project, uh, a TSLint project for accomplishing this? And I pinged Menko and Vasim and they said, oh, yeah, we could do this, but we could do this in Codelizer. And they asked me to contribute to it. I, I was like, okay, let's pick that up. It's, it's kind of a different project. Like I, I'm not used to working with linters and stuff. But I picked picked that up and added like 10 different accessibility rules. You can check them out on web.dev slash Angular in the accessibility uh, pro, you know, article. You can read all about what are the different rules and why they were added to the Codelizer. That's great. And that's on web.dev, you said? Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Cool. That is really great, man. Codelizer sounds like a hard project to contribute to. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, like, it's kind of like you have to understand the ASTs and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, that was something different. But yeah, it, it's it's not... Uh, I mean, Min Cook developed it. In, in like, it's maintaining that repository. So he maintains it yeah. in very maintainable way. So yeah, it's very easy to good. contribute as well. That's good. I think 85% of the people I know have contributed to Formly somehow. Like, I feel like that's like the most popular open source project of guests on this show and of my friends. <laughs> so that one sounds maybe more doable, but Codalizer, that sounds intimidating because yep. it's doing so much. Like, And it was built by someone who's so smart. But to your point, maybe he's smart enough to make it maintainable he too, right? So yeah, that's good. That's cool. And then at last, coming to the competitor <laughs> library. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew React Loadable, which makes it loading uh, components very easy and simplifies that process. And something that it also gives you is, you know, showing loading, uh, you know, indicator while something your component is loading, showing timeout, showing preloading your component, right? Uh, Like even before you even show that up. So maybe you have a model which has like dependency on D3 and all that stuff, and it takes a while to load. So Preloading that is a very good feature, which we have for routes, but not for lazy loading components. So, yeah, I wanted to build this NGX loadable. Then see, and like I, I didn't even like I when I read about it, I was doing React, and it was like a, a revelation for me that oh, you could do this in Angular because I wanted that feature to be in Angular. Yeah, and I was like, okay, but this. When I read the articles about it, it looks annoying. Like it, it's so complicated to do. And that's where I was like, okay, we can create a wrapper. I didn't even try to find existing wrappers. I just said, okay, there's React Loadable as an example for me to recreate my NGX Loadable and try to create all those features, but in an Angular context. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm looking at it. So for those who don't know what it is, when you want to lazy load something like D3 or um, maybe an Angular component, in Angular, it's super easy if it's a route change that's happening, mm-hmm. right? But like, what if it's in a modal? Like maybe you've got a modal with the PayPal library in it. And like anyone who's worked with PayPal, that SDK is like big. It's at least as big as your framework. You don't want to load that. You know, you want to load that when you open up. I think the best example when we oh. gave about loading is not just model, but think about dashboard design. Like where, yeah. where you have like 50 different widgets. Maybe the user just wants to show five different widgets. Do you want to load all the 50 different widgets JavaScript in, in the bundle of your route and then include it? Or do you want to, you know, just load it on demand, just include five? Yeah, yeah. I agree. And then there's also maybe if you are listening to the network speed, which is an API in the browser, you might want to load things immediately if they're fast, but you might want to definitely delay load it if it's a slow network speed, right? So. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of reasons why you would want to not, you would want to lazy load something other than on route changes. And so this NGX loadable gives you a library that you don't have to build. And, and trust me, it's not easy to do on your own. Like it's significantly complex to do this thing without NGX loadable. And so 
that's what this library is good for. It, it makes it so that anyone can kind of have like that, that expert level control over the size of their bundles and when things get loaded in. So it's a really, really handy library. So another thing that uh, like always try to update your library is my, is, I mean, you learn a lot of stuff. Like once I developed, I think I developed this library in February and then I was like, okay, I, I think I covered most of my features that I wanted to look into this library for. And then I think I stopped my development for a two or three months. And then last month I picked up the stars. Okay, can we make this better? And I came up with version two where in version one, you had requirement for like adding the lazy modules array to the Angular, uh, JSON, et cetera. In version two, I, you don't even have to do that. I use schematics to make it even better so that you just run ng generate ngx loadable module to create the, mm-hmm. all that for you. And it doesn't yeah. even include that in Angular JSON. So it's, it's so that's cool. Yeah, it's it's really cool that Angular CLI gives you all these capabilities to yeah. make things easier. It does make it easier, right? Right. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, are you working on a complex enterprise Angular application? Angular Bootcamp is an intensive three-day workshop class to learn the basics of Angular through sophisticated techniques for real-world applications. They update the class regularly for the most current Angular, and a lot of the curriculum is also relevant to older versions. Or you can go beyond the three-day class with help from Oasis Digital, the team behind Angular Bootcamp. They can assist your team or launch your project, including scalability, data flow, state management, service architecture, full-stack product design, and a ton more. Or you can contact them for a private class at your location or attend public classes in cities around the U.S. and occasionally in Europe. Online live instructor training is also available at angularbootcamp.com. Well, that's a lot of open source stuff. So um, I guess I'm going to ask a couple other questions. Do you have like a crazy Stack Overflow score too? Sounds like... No. I you don't. know? All right. You never know. People who are as passionate as you, sometimes they're like 2 million on Stack Overflow. So <laughs> I, figured I'd, I figured I'd ask. Besides this, I mean, what else have you been up to? Uh, are you at conferences and, and stuff? Or? I haven't been to any conferences yet, but I'm planning for NGCon next year, hopefully. Right. Nice, yeah. nice. It's time to He's too busy. Right? Oh, that's right. CFPs open, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CFPs are open. I submitted a couple of them. I'm planning to submit more. So, yeah, hoping something from that side. Even if not, like, I will try my company to, uh, you know, get me there next year, hopefully. Very yeah. cool. You definitely need to get there. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is. Brian, you're teaching a workshop there this year. I am. I'm doing the two-day workshop before the conference, and that'll be on Angular Fundamentals. Wow. Yeah. So if, yeah. you're, if you're new to Angular and you kind of want to learn all the ins and outs about Angular and RxJS and everything that goes into the Angular framework, come join yeah, me. Yeah, it's, it's really great to be a part of the community. Like, It's not just like conferences or podcasts, but like, Things like workshops are really helpful, like teaching, getting people into the room and getting, teaching them the fundamentals and teaching them how to do stuff from scratch is really important. I think, yeah, that would be great. Angular fundamentals, looking up for that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like you don't need to be there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> for anybody <else> listening, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, I'll go and there. Aaron, I'll be there. You come into your class, bro. You're doing no. You're doing what? Two workshops? Is that what I saw well, in the email? Brocky and I. It was like weird. We we're like, let's do an observables class. Nice. Brocky and I. We were like, we're like, we're gonna do an observables class where we kind of go through, you know, zero to hero on observables, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's two day. Like everyone has their own way of teaching, and I have seen observables sure. from different speakers and different angles. I think uh-huh. Aaron first brings a different perspective. Like he brings some promises and then teaches that, and it's really interesting. Yeah. So we're hoping that we can peel it back a little bit easier for everybody. And the important thing about teaching observables, at least in this course, is they're difficult not only to learn, but they're hard to explain. So part of this is helping others be better at teaching observables. It's not just about teaching the class to learn to use observables. Mm-hmm. It's about, also about teaching developers like us to to teach them better because we're not very yeah. good. Like, Do either of you guys remember when you were first learning Rx and someone was like, hey, what is an array of numbers That's and an right. array it's, of it's, click it's events have in common? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, right. nothing. They, uh, <laughs> they have nothing on... <laughs> In five dimensions in common. They're, they're, not, they're not, nothing common. 
They're in an array. That's it. All right. That's it. <laughs> and then the instructor's like, nope. They're strings. <laughs> They're strings. Like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not even an answer. Like anyway, so uh, that's not a way to teach it. So there's better. We got to get better at teaching these things too. So right. that's good. I like that. No. Yeah. Anyway, so we're doing a two day on that, but we're also doing a one day on reactive Angular because I personally think that's the most important skill for Angular developers to kind of master is being reactive. Are you going to be in two places at once? Isn't there usually so, only two days of workshops? So I have a twin brother. <laughs> so no uh, i know that i know that but no, so i didn't know day, that he was a developer day one i'm with brocky and then day two i'm gonna go do my own thing oh got it and then he'll, yeah. he'll just day yeah, two but, he'll be yeah, doing yeah, rxs yeah. with yeah, yeah, whoever yeah. yeah by himself okay got it yeah cool. yeah so it'll be fun i was wondering how you're gonna do that <laughs> but reactive angular is gonna be it's it's gonna be an amazing class like people are gonna walk in wondering what did you know what does that word even mean reactive and they'll walk uh-huh. out and they'll know so it'll be yeah fun. yeah but there's a lot of good workshops. I feel like we just derailed the podcast, but I'm going to keep – once it, now that it's off the rails, I'm going to keep going down this path. Tara, she's going to be there giving a jam stack. Yep, I saw that. Jam stack Angular. John and Dan, obviously, have got three – Architecture. Three days. They actually have three days of workshops. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. There's one on Sunday, bro. Wow. So, yeah, they've got a Sunday one. They'll be the only one on a Monday and Tuesday. So they've got three days of classes, and then you've got uh, Ionic. I uh, saw that. The, the geniuses from Narwhal will be there. Mike Hardington yep. is the Ionic guy, by the way. I was just going to ask him. Yeah, Mike's doing Ionic, and yeah. then Jeff and Victor are doing NX Mono Repos. I think Victor may not be there. I think he's got some, you know, exciting family stuff going on. So he's oh, okay. He's, he's probably not going to be there, but um, Jeff will be there. And the, nice. I guess the main contributor from not from NX will be there too. I'm trying to remember his name. I think it's Jason. yes, Jason. Yep. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's awesome. I think Jason will be there too. So it'll be good. It'll be good. Well, that's good. Brandon Roberts and Mike Ryan. They'll be doing uh, two day NGRX by the creators yep. of NGRX, which will be good. Some great lots, workshops. Yeah, lots of good workshops, bro. And those tickets are available now, or when Today, do they go on sale? Today, okay, already on All sale. Right. So buy them before they run out. But uh, yeah, and in, then in like the next week or so, we're going to announce the theme of the conference. We haven't announced it. It's also on discount currently, right? The discount sold out, and so it's kind of on like regular ticket prices. Okay. So, so yeah. Now, what if I already bought my ticket and I'm listening to this podcast and I'm saying, ooh, I really want to go to this workshop. Can I go back and still get a workshop yeah. ticket or am I kind of sold out at this point? You know it. Just go buy the tickets. Like if you're local and you just want to go to the workshop or you, you just want to go to the workshop and not a conference. You no, just no buy I didn't know that. Oh, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So the workshop's just kind of a separate ticketed item. So yeah, buy it on nice. its own. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to go to all three days or just you don't want to go to, you only want to go to one or two or whatever. Just buy those as well. So, uh, there are individual per day tickets too for the workshops. Yeah, okay. not for the conference. Yeah, yeah, the conference is just a single ticket, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So Zama, what else? What else are you working on, man? Like, what else keeps you awake at night besides your book and your baby? <laughs> so currently, like, uh, I'm trying to improve the library that I said and JX loadable. Like, uh, I have a version three coming up, so. What I want to do is utilize Ivy, Angular Ivy in that. And we know that uh, modules are not required in version 9 for lazy loading components. I want to explore that area and see how we can improve that. I know that the Ivy API is not public enough so that you can Mm -hmm. create wrappers around it. And it should be stable by probably Angular 10. But then I'm just playing with it and seeing where we can take this library to make it much better and like not even requiring a module to be created for laser loading a company. That's really awesome. exciting. I, yeah, I'd love to, if you get a chance, write a blog post about that or, you know, kind of teach the community on what you learned. Because uh, sure, I think yeah. a lot of us are... A blogger at NGCon champion. I'm an NGCon champion, by the way. Oh, hello. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing that blog post then. <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I got to go work on my loader now. Like, I feel like you're calling me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I created an issue for on your library and asked you to like implement a bunch of stuff like timeouts, mm-hmm. loading, indicator, etc. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. 
Yeah. Is that issue open or is that closed? Maybe I'm like, probably open. I <laughs> it's open. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh, life's too busy. Uh, maybe you're gonna get some anonymous tickets on your library as well. Oh, actually, uh, I, I think it's it's a great use of uh, this month, as you probably have heard about Hacktober Fest going on this month. In my library, I created a bunch of issues with, with the labels as Hack, Hacktober Fest. Oh, and cool. a lot of people actually help you. Like, uh, like they came up and helped me. So it's, it's really great. Like, just use that maybe. Like, try to get some new contributors too. It's a great idea. A good suggestion. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, so and I also saw Brocky and Justin, and Justin doing some Hacktober Fest on their uh, Twitch account last week. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice, they're nice. fun. They're fun. So, Zama, I have a question. So you've created an Angular Formally. I know that's used. I've used it in a couple of production applications at uh, large enterprises. And you've got all these projects. I'm kind of curious, what's been the biggest challenge maybe that you've run into when writing your own library and publishing it and getting out there? Is it the is it building it? You know, I've heard from some people and I've built a, a very small library myself and sometimes the TypeScript declarations and all the all the typescript stuff can be very difficult with all the generics and everything or is it the publishing process or is it like the maintenance like kind of can you give us a little clue you know if i'm interested in contributing to open source what are some of the struggles that you've you've kind of faced as part of this so firstly publishing is one thing that you have to understand how version works i can give you an example like where i made a small you know issue and and it's all the process like you should do open source not for the sake of doing open source but also for learning stuff so that's where i feel like you know contributing to open source will give you more value where you learn a lot you learn to see how what a framework can do and what are the possible ways of doing and what's the best way of doing it and that's where i see the value of open source and you learn a lot of stuff like in ngx 2.0 when i was releasing I created a branch, like I pushed a new version called 2.0.0 alpha zero. And I didn't know that I have to like put a flag called alpha to push it. And then I saw like people who are using it Uh, coming and creating issues saying, oh, why does it say it's it's not working now? So so there was a breaking uh change in that alpha version. Uh People automatically, when they NPM install, they got the latest version. So basically, you learn a lot of stuff. Like publishing is is one thing that you learn. Like it's so when I was developing formally, and there was like Angular was in a release candidate, and we didn't know how to dynamically load the component. You know how formally works it. It basically dynamically loads your you know all the components in place for you where you just provide a configuration for the form. You just say uh, you just have an array of objects and say what are the different form fields, et cetera. And then on runtime, Formly actually dynamically loads that up and shows that on the screen. So when it was Angular 2 release candidate, you didn't have that much uh, visibility about what are the different internals of Angular and how to achieve things. Yeah, once you learn those things, you will get... So so if you are a programmer, you actually, you know, get to an expert level where you understand some some things which are not normally known. So I think that's very important. Like, just go ahead. If you have an idea, if you have a passion for building something, then start implementing it. And then even if you don't know that, how to do some stuff, you will learn it. I mean, there would be ways of that's cool. to learn Yep. That's really great advice. I like it. Yeah, that's fantastic. There's a lot of uh, people out there wondering these questions, so I'm glad that you're giving such good answers. Uh, there's a lot of people who are looking to be first-time contributors, so thanks for thanks for coming on and talking about that. It's also like, just go to Hacktoberfest and just select TypeScript and maybe search for Angular in, in on GitHub with Hacktober label and then mm-hmm. try to contribute to those uh, repositories and open source projects. I mean, that, that would be very good. Good for uh, new time open source developers who wants to focus on Angular, and there are things like first time only label. They are like up for grabs. Yep. Issuehub.io yep. where people mm-hmm. can go and find. It. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I haven't been to Hacktoberfest.com, so I should probably get in there and check it out. So 
if anyone wants to kind of reach out to you online and, and uh, engage with you, what's the best place for them to get a hold of you? Twitter, I think. I'm trying to get more into Twitter. So, yeah, you can find me at Muhammad Zama Khan. And the only thing in my Twitter handle is that you, you could, I couldn't have like double M in my name because of the length of my Twitter account. So it's basically M-O-H-A-M-E-D instead of M-M. So it's Muhammad Zama Khan. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So if anyone wants to reach out, get them on Twitter. This episode is sponsored by flatfile.io. CSV import is broken. I mean, don't you cringe when you think about how to account for messy data, edge cases, encoding formats. You have that comma or quote in the wrong place. And explaining it to end users, it, that, that's just a mess. Building and maintaining a custom importer is a huge time suck and a royal pain. That's why the folks at Flatfile created an elegant import button. Their CSV import integrates into any web app and provides auto column matching, data validation, and an intuitive user experience with just a few lines of code. Flatfile's pre-built SDKs and extensive configuration options make it easier for you to ship the importer you've always wanted. As a listener of this show, you can get a 20% off your first year with the code DEVCHAT, that's capital D-E-V-C-H-A-T. Get it at flatfile.io. Never build a CSV importer again. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the picks. Brian, you got any picks you want to start with? You want me to go? I'll, you go. You, you go. I got one pick in related to ng-conf, right? So we've talked about workshops. We talked about the CFP op- uh, being open. So my pick is the uh, live office hours. And I imagine, Aaron, you're yeah. heavily involved with that. So that's October 14th at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. And there's a link. You go up on what YouTube.com, search for ng-conf. And I think there's a, like a video. It's like set up already. Yeah, I'm sure if you follow ngconf on Twitter, you'll be tweeting out uh, the link to that as well. So if you're if you're listening to the podcast and you're like, hey, you know, this is awesome. I want to speak uh, at ngconf. I'm interested in submitting a proposal. What do I do? How do I get started? What's important? What's not important? Kind of that process. Uh, Aaron and the organizers will take you kind of through that, right? Yeah, definitely. We'll try and we'll try and make it easier. It's kind of nerve wracking, if we could be honest. Like. It makes me nervous. Uh, I submit talks, and we're trying to make it as least scary as possible. So we're trying to do an office hours where I don't care if it's your first time or your hundredth time. Mm-hmm. You can come ask questions about, hey, what should I do? And the, mm-hmm. the questions can be like, are you going to pay for my flight? Right? And, 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 and <laughs> that's we'll a valid that. question. It's a valid right? question. No, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a serious question. Are you going to help coach me? Yeah, we are. We have a professional yeah. speaker coach. Are yep, you going awesome. to are you going to review my slides? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we we won't let any slides go on stage without making sure that it's like approved content that isn't going to kind of offend the community. And so, yeah, like there's there's a lot you could ask. How should I structure my talk? How should I structure my my submission? Like mm-hmm. there's a lot of questions and so we're there to kind of answer them and make it as easy as we can and we do kind of assume that role of know-it-alls that you can ask questions to and and that kind of might come across as weird, but we are we are just there to try and help is all. So yeah, so, yeah, yep. That's yeah, definitely my pick. I remember you probably don't know this, Aaron. This was before I think I'd even met you. I watched like the office hours. I think in 2017 or something because mm-hmm. I was so intimidated to even yeah. submit. I was just like, no, nobody wants to hear what I have to say, right? Yeah. Nobody yeah. cares. Uh, or or here's the other one is like, oh, that's already been done. Or I'm not the expert in this. Or you can talk yourself out of submitting so oh, easily, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, totally. And uh, so I watched those office hours and I'm I'm here to even say like, I, I did not submit that year because I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm out. <laughs> even, even after going to the office hours. But then the next year, I got the courage, did it and submitted. And, and so it's a great experience. So certainly That's check funny. that out. Yeah, don't pull the ripcord. Definitely submit. Just submit. <laughs> when in doubt, submit. Right. Because yeah. here's a fact. There's probably on every topic 20 talks. So you're just going to be one of 20. It's not like you're, it's not like we only want one submission for each topic. Like, oh, there's a router talk. No more submissions. Like, no, we, we actually want 20. And we'll, we'll, we'll pick the one that we think represents the community the best, you know? So, right. Um, and what's the deadline? So I know it's open now. What do I have until like December or something? No, nah, you have till January 3rd. Yeah, oh, that's trying. right. You mentioned that. That's right. Through the yeah. holidays. Right. Yeah, we like yep. people to take that, that uh, you know, 
the, the holiday break and think it through and kind of finish up their ideas. And then shortly and I after think that, it's also good for people, like since Angular IV is coming out, maybe yeah. you can hack with some new APIs and yeah. cool stuff with a new, new talks. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're if you're just sitting there right now, I'm, I'm glad you said that, Zama. And you're like, what should I talk about? I'm telling you, everyone wants to know about Ivy. Yep, myself included. If you create a brand new project with Angular CLI right now, it's turned on in Angular 9. So yeah, go create a new project yep. and start buggering with it and come up with a talk title. Like come and up with a talk. You, yeah, teach yeah, us something. you learned. Yeah. You know, like there's only going to be one conference, one ng-conf where Ivy was new and you can get those new That's Ivy really talks. And so this is kind yep. of the first one. This is the only one you're going to get a chance to do that. So definitely yep. do that. That's my suggestion is to definitely do an intro to Ivy, beginner, Ivy X, you know, something like that type talk, because this was the only time that's going to be like a valid topic level. So yep. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Good pick. I'm going to, I'm going to move on my picks. So this is a pick that kind of keeps me a little bit sane, Brian. Any more of the days are a little bit weird. 2016, it seems like it was 45 years ago. Uh, the last two years <laughs> have gone by a little bit slow for me. So late night with Seth Myers, that's my pick. It keeps me fresh a lot of days. And uh, so late night with Seth Myers is my pick. Isn't is he the one that does it's a closer uh it's it's time a closer for a closer look? look. Yeah. It's, it's closer time look. for a closer look. It's so good. I yeah. love that that oh man. Yeah, so he ties it together at the end so well. Yeah. His writers are fantastic. So anyway. Absolutely. Yeah, with John Stewart gone, I don't know, Seth Myers is probably He's pretty fantastic. Like so I'll, I'm going to pick Seth Myers. I was also going to pick The Office Hours. I think by the time this podcast goes out, The Office Hours will have gone out earlier that morning. So I think, well, maybe, actually, I think this goes out on Monday and the, pot, the, the Office Hours is Monday at noon. So. so I'm not actually sure. If you're listening to this, it might be too late, but try and get on The Office Hours. So yeah, those are my picks. Zama, you have any picks for the community? Yeah, I, I saw a new tweet from Dominic Elm. He created this library called NGX Template Stream, uh, and where you can actually use emojis instead of like NGF and NG4 and stuff. Like you can use emojis, and it's called hacking the Angular compiler. He has slides up there, and you can go through the slides, and they are really awesome. That's awesome. I love Dominic. He's so cool. Yeah, I mean, especially when they do things with machine learning and stuff, it's yeah. really amazing because I kind of love that uh, space of, you know, machine learning stuff. I'm think, thinking of doing something with TensorFlow.js. So, yeah, great. I got a chance a few months ago to kind of work with him on a project, and I think he's fantastic. I really, really like Dominic. I'm glad you picked that. Yeah, go check out that talk. Um, I'll link to the slides in the show notes so people can go find those slides. All right. Well, Zama, thanks for coming on. Brian, thanks for taking time away from your vacation to be on the podcast. Of course. And, happy to be here. And to the listener, I will say thanks, and we will see you next time. Peace. Adventures in Angular is a devchat.tv production made in partnership with Hero Devs. Hero Devs is a group of Angular experts who can help your team code like true developer heroes. If your team needs an Angular expert, reach out to Aaron at hero.dev today. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y.com to learn more.